So I want to talk about binomial probability distributions. And these are um, really, I want to say cool distributions, but, <laughs> but they are discrete. Okay, this is a discrete probability distribution in particular. So if you recall what discrete means, finite countable outcomes. Outcomes that are whole numbers, right? Discrete, that's what discrete means. So your random variables, I'll write this down for you guys. Your random variables are whole numbers, are finite or countable, that's what that means. Okay? Um, so our outcomes are discrete random variables. Now, um, there are certain requirements before we do a probability distribution. There's certain requirements that need to be met. Um, it's a special type of probability distribution. Um, and once, you know, we have a situation that meets these requirements, calculation of the probabilities involved becomes much more simpler um, using um, binomial uh, methods. Um, so the first requirement that has to be met in order to be considered a binomial probability distribution is we need a fixed number of trials. Okay, a fixed number of trials. Um, and I'll explain what that means each time. The trials must be independent. They must be independent trials. Otherwise, um, so again, the probability of one occurring should not affect the next. Um, each trial must have two outcomes. So there should be only two outcomes per trial, which we define or we call success or failure. And success doesn't necessarily have to be the good one, it's just the one that we're trying to calculate. So two outcomes, either success or failure. Either we get what we want or we don't. If there are more than two outcomes, it cannot be binomial. Um, the probability of success per trial has to be um, the same for all your trials, which would make sense if they're independent, right? So if these requirements are met, then we have what's called a binomial probability distribution. And we can calculate the probability of X outcomes in N trials. So this notation represents the probability of X outcomes, we call X successes, in um, N outcomes, N trials. is equal to, now if you're going to use the formula, um, there's a you know, calculator trick, there's a formula, I'll show you the formula first, and then I'll do the calculator trick. But P of X is equal to, um, if you guys remember from, I can't remember if it was the last chapter, but NCR, NCR combinations times P to the X, so this is small p, to the X times Q to the N minus X where p, small p, represents the probability of success here, which should be one number. q is the probability of failure, and it's the complement of the probability of success. So you can always find q by doing 1 minus p. Um, sorry, this should be x. n is your number of trials. I don't know why I can't spell right now. Okay. N is your number of trials. And X represents the number of successes in those N trials. Okay. So, you know, you'll typically hear this is the probability of exactly X successes in N trials. Now, I'm going to show you how to use this formula. And then after that, I'm going to show you how to um, uh, use the calculator trick. <laughs> Once we do, you know, a basic calculation, then I'm going to show you all these other type of things that we could, uh, we could do with it. So, um, so let me find a problem to use here. Okay, so let me find the problem real quick. 
Alright, we'll just use this. I might not do all of these. Let's do this one. Alright, so I'm taking this from our book. So I have <clears throat> assume that when adults use with smartphones are randomly selected, 54% of them are used in meetings or classes. Not good, right? So they're in meetings or in classes using their phone. Shame, shame, shame. All right. <laughs> this one says, if eight adult smartphone users are randomly selected, find the probability that exactly six of them use their smartphones in a meeting or a class. Okay. First of all, I, you know, you can calculate this situation in different ways, but if I can use binomial then I would like to because it would make my calculation faster and easier. So exactly six is a giveaway when you're doing binomial. Um, again, it's a discrete probability distribution situation, and this is a discrete number of outcomes. But I need to check the requirements. I want to check to make sure that, you know, the requirements of a binomial probability distribution are met because if they're not, I can't use the binomial um, formula. So, I mean, I'm going to write down the quick checks in the, in the beginning, but after that, I'm not going to do it just because you don't have, you could do it in your head. So, do I have a fixed number of trials? Do I have a fixed number of trials? Yes. I have eight total smartphone users. So, I'm going to define my variables. N is eight, right? N represents the total number of trials. There are eight adult smartphone users. This is the total amount that I have. So, I have a fixed number of trials. And that fixed number is eight. Um, are the trials independent? So if, if, if one person uses a smartphone in a meeting, technically it should not affect the probability of another person using a smartphone in a meeting or um, class. We're going to assume that they're independent, right? Because we're assuming that they're multiple different meetings as well. So yes, they are independent trials, right? One doesn't affect another. Three, two outcomes, success or failure. Yes, success or failure. Let's call success, capital S. We'll define success to be um, using the smartphone in a meeting or class, okay? In a meeting or class. Always define your success and your failure. Failure, in this case, would be not using, right? The, meet, the smartphone in a meeting or class. So yes, only two outcomes, correct. Is the probability of success the same for all trials? So a probability of success here, we define success to be using in a meeting or, or class. So the probability of using the smartphone in a meeting or class, is it the same per person? Well, let's see, go back up here. Um, assume that when adults with smartphones are randomly selected, 54% use in meetings or classes. So 54%, so the probability of any individual using a smartphone in a meeting or class is that 54%. And, you know, in terms of your um, notation for binomial, that's your small p. Small p is the probability of success, which in this case is 0.54, and therefore the fourth requirement is met, and we can use binomial probability distribution, BPD. So if you ever see me write BPD, binomial probability distribution, okay? So yes, we can use that stuff. So we define n, we're defining p, let's define q. q is easy because it's 1 minus p, um, so q is 1 minus 0.54, so q is 0 0.46. Um, you know, what else can I define? Every time you guys are setting this up, you want to define all your variables. Let me write it over here. n is 8, p is 0 0.54, because I can ask a lot of questions based on this now, and q is 0.46. Now, this particular question says, if eight adult smartphone users are randomly selected, find the probability that exactly six of them use their smartphones in a meeting or class. Six out of the eight. So we're going to call that the number of successes in that number of trials, right? That is my x. Success is defined to be using in a meeting or class. I want to know the probability of exactly six of them. So for this particular question, x is 6, and I want to find p of x, or p of 6. Now, I'm going to do it using the formula first, and then after that, I'll show you guys in a separate video the same problem using the calculator trick. All right, so where's my formula? Here's my formula. 
I want p of x. x in this case is 6. We already defined n, we defined p, we defined q. We have all the variables that we need, so now we can go straight and um, calculate this. n c x. So 8, that should be a subscript. 8 c 6 times small p, right? Small p probability of success to the x. Small p, which is 0.54 to the x to the 6 times q to the n minus x. q is 0 0.46 to the n minus x, to the 8 minus 6, right? So I'm just plugging in everything. This we know how to do on our calculator. So I'm just, let me write this out and I'll show you in the calculator. 0 0.54 to the 6 times 0 0.46 to the second. You could plug all that directly in. So here's my calculation, here's my calculator. So 8C6, you don't remember if you hit 8 math over 2 prob down to NCR. I did this in another video. Enter 6, right? So this is 28. I'm going to just plug it all in times 0.54 to the 6, 0.54 to the 6. times 0.46 to the second. Okay, so this is, you know, technically using the formula. And I get, I'm going to round this, to, you know, three digits to the right, so 0.147, approximately 0 0.147, or 14.7% chance. So I have, here's my situation. I got eight adults that are randomly selected. The probability of each of them using a smartphone in a classroom meeting, which is not what they're supposed to do, is 54% chance. That's uh, more than half are using their smartphones in a meeting or class. Um, what is the probability that out of the eight, exactly six of them are using their smartphones in a meeting or class? 14.7% chance that exactly six out of the eight are using their um, smartphone in a meeting or class. Now that's more than, you know, that's more than half. Again, it's random. And again, order matters, right? If I were to do this using the multiplication rule, I'd have to consider the order in which I select those six. But that's what this part of the formula is for. So, all right. Technically, the formula is not hard. It's plug and chug as long as you can identify each of these pieces, right? So, um... Let's go into my next video then and look at it using the graphing calculator.